I'm gonna tell you a secret. The very first photo that I sold was taken with an iPhone and not even a good one. <laughs> so in this video, I wanna talk about the basics to get started in landscape photography, the gear that you're gonna need, what to look for in a used deal, and then we're even gonna get online, shop through some listings and talk about what might be good or bad about that certain deal. Photo equipment can be really expensive, but when you're getting started, there's no reason you can't start for just a couple hundred bucks get some basics and get you out there shooting, creating some magnificent images. This is the Canon T5i. This is the camera that really helped me establish my photography career. This is the one that I took all of my early images on and allowed me to create an income stream in photography, just with this little guy right here. Pretty incredible. So this is an 18 megapixel crop sensor camera as opposed to a full frame sensor like the Canon 5D. This is a DSLR, meaning it is a mirrored camera versus the more modern cameras now that are mirrorless. So this has the 50 millimeter F1.8 lens on it. This is not the lens that I used in most of photography, but this is a great one for portraits. It's an F1.8, so if you really wanna blur out the background on a subject in a portrait or you have a, a still outdoor scene that you'd like to do, this 50 millimeter f1.8 is great for that. The lens that I would recommend if you're shopping for a little camera like that is this one. This is the Canon EFS 18 to 135. It's a zoom lens as opposed to the 50 millimeter that's a prime lens, which means it does not zoom. It's just 50 millimeters all the time. This is 18 to 135, so 18 millimeters here, 135 millimeters here. So it's got a really nice range, has nice image quality. All of the images that I sold early on were taken with this lens. So you can make money with this lens. You just need to know what you're doing as far as, far as composition, as far as setting up your shot, getting what you need and post-processing. But this lens is gonna get you what you need and they are cheap. You can pick these up for, again, just a couple hundred bucks. Ideally, if you're shopping for a used kit to get you started and you look for a Canon T5i or T7i or T8i um, or upgrade to the like 70D or 80D series, also fantastic cameras. And we'll go through that. We'll do some shopping online so we can kind of see what we're looking at, see what price ranges there are and see what you might want to avoid and what's going to be a really good fit for you. This camera met a watery grave. <laughs> so that's why I'd probably still be using it if that didn't happen, but uh, it did. I got sprayed by a massive wave and uh, salt water and cameras don't mix. And so this camera has never worked since that day, but it spurred me to upgrade, which is always a good thing. Okay, let's get online, look at some listings and just see what we can find. I'm gonna go Canon. I'm gonna say T5i and let's see what happens. Just look at these and see if we can help you find a good deal or kind of share what to look for. No doubt you're gonna find similar listings in yours and already look at this. I mean, 350, 250, 435. Let's look at what we might find as a, that one looks like the right lens. Yeah, I bet that's the 18 to 135 lens, 400 bucks. A lot of people get these and then they just never use them or they didn't like the hobby and so they had just sit there. This one looks like it would be I mean, 400 bucks for the T5i and an 18 to 135 lens. You really can't go wrong on that. This one, okay, see, for the same price, $435, you get your T5i, a 28 to 200, a 70 to 300, and a Sigma 17 to 70. Those are all decent lenses. The 70 to 300 isn't great. You see, like when you start getting into more expensive, higher quality lenses, you have a consistent aperture. The 18 to 135 and this, you know, all, all of these here, they have apertures that change based on the zoom of the lens. So when you're all the way out at 28 millimeters in this case, you can open your aperture up to 3.5. When you're all the way at 200 millimeters, you can only open it up to 5.6. Versus other lenses like the 24 to 70 Canon f2.8 is an f2.8 all the way through its range. So that's where some of the lens differences start to come into play. But it's really not a huge deal. If you're shooting in bright light or you have a tripod, you can always use your settings to make up for that. So the difference in savings is pretty worth it, especially when you're just starting out. Let's do a search for the Canon 80D and see what happens. The used market on these Canon crop sensor cameras is so good. Like it's such a buyer's market for these cameras because, you know, these were, I don't know, $1,500 cameras when they were new. So still not top of the line flagship models, but my goodness, you really can't go wrong with these. And I just wanted to get on here and show you the price. And to round out your package on getting started, 
pick up a tripod. It can be an inexpensive one. You can, I mean, top of the line tripods can be a thousand bucks, 1500 bucks or more, but you don't need that. You can pick up a tripod for 50 bucks, a hundred bucks and get everything you need. All you need to do is keep your camera steady and that's going to do it. So look for that. Also an extra battery is always a good thing. So a camera, a lens, a tripod, an extra battery, and of course a memory card. And when you have those things, get out there and have fun. You have everything you need to create absolutely magical art. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Leave a comment, ask any questions, I'll be sure to get back to you.